in three, two, one. We are waiting for the doors to open at Lejeune Hall for Army, Navy, swimming and diving. And joining me is three-time Olympic gold medalist, Rowdy Gaines. Rowdy, it is a privilege and an honor to have you here. How are you feeling about this competition? Your fifth star meet. You know, it's funny, Luke, because I, I still get nervous every year when I come in because I feel like I have, I have such an a, a affiliation now with this amazing institution and, uh, and all the kids, I just feel uh, such a strong connection to and you know it, it's literally like coming back to paradise every two years and uh, I love the Naval Academy I love what both institutions stand for but you know my allegiance obviously was uh, with Navy so I, I'm a big go Navy guy kind of guy where does this meet stack up for you against the Olympics and against the other competitions you've had the privilege of covering well, it's funny you, you asked that question because I was just talking to Justin a little while ago about this. You know, I was on a podcast a, a few months ago, um, kind of a broadcasting podcast, and they asked me that question, like, what is the most memorable moment or moments in your broadcasting career? And I say every single time it's Army-Navy. And I'm getting ready to call my ninth Olympic Games next summer. And with all due respect to the Olympics, it's unbelievable, you know? I mean, I got to swim in one, and I got to uh, call eight of them, getting ready to do number nine. But there's nothing like Army-Navy. Just from the standpoint of these are our future heroes, you know? These are the people that um, I have such a mad admiration for, and the energy that you feel when you walk into this building is unbelievable. I've never felt anything like that at any point in my career, except maybe when I swam at the Olympics in Los Angeles in 1984, because it was a similar feeling. It was made you feel so proud. It, it made you feel so warm uh, to be an American. You idolize these future heroes, like you said, and they look up to you having represented this country graciously internationally for more than four decades. What do you talk about with these swimmers before they, they take to the pool? Well, it's kind of hard to tell you the truth. I, I'm this person when I come in and speak to some swimmers or a, a team, you know, I'm supposed to provide inspiration, motivation. <laughs> Dude, I'm like going, how do I do that with these guys? They're the ones that inspire me, so it's a little awkward for me to tell you the truth because I talk about words like dedication and commitment and responsibility and teamwork, and I'm sitting there going, whoa, I'm preaching to the choir here, you know? And so it, it is a little hard, I have to tell you. Um, but they are kids, you know, and in the end, they're, they're, they're kids, and um, they still have that feeling of, hey, we still need to get to where we want to go to in this sport. In real life, which is all that really matters, they've got it made. But in the pool, I at least feel like I can offer the kind of advice that will help inspire them. You made waves in the freestyle during your swimming career. When you watch and observe from the broadcast booth, what do you look for for a successful uh, freestyle race? Well, when, in freestyle, everything is about feel for the water and making sure that there are sort of blinders that you need to put on when you're swimming, especially in sprinting. You don't want to look around a lot. Uh, and, and in this case, especially in this high profile of meet, you tend to look a lot. And, and so, so I, I try to tell the freestylers, specifically in these shorter races, you know, swim like this. Um, because you can't get into looking, um, you know, at the end of a hundred, you want to race, absolutely step up and race. The longer races, you can look a little bit more, but freestyle is a, is a critical stroke to kind of put those blinders on. You have that in breast and butterfly and backstroke in reality, except for the peripheral vision, but in freestyle, you're turning right into them. Mm -hmm. Having covered as many Olympic games and international contests as you have, how do you prepare? What prep work do you put in for, for a meet like this? Well, I, I literally stay in touch with the, the serve, all the service academies, but specifically Navy, and I follow them throughout the year, you know, so I can get a feel for what I'm going to do when I actually call the races. But I do that next year, too, when I don't call it because it's, it's at West Point. I still follow, you know, because I'm a fan. And I think being a fan of the sport, people ask me all the time, Luke, what's the number one reason why you want a gold medal in the Olympics? And I tell them every single time it's because I love it. 
I, I have a passion for the sport. I'm not perfect. There were many times I didn't like it, but I love swimming. And so I love to follow swimming. And for me, the preparation is just being a huge fan. And that's what I am of Navy. If you're familiar with last year's meet, then you know there's plenty of drama. The men had their winning streak snapped. The Navy men did. Who do you have your eyes on on the men's swimming and diving side to have a breakout meet? Well, you know, I, I think when you look at these kids, uh, in generalities especially, it has to come from the senior leadership. Because these freshmen and sophomores, they have no idea what it's like to do it here, right? And so you've got a lot of young guys on, on both the men and the women's team, a lot of young swimmers. So they're not going to know what to expect. They, the, the, the sophomores obviously felt it from a, uh, a different standpoint last year when they went to West Point. But... This place, as you know, it's going to be like rocking, man. Dude, it's going to be crazy in here. So I think it's up to those juniors and seniors, especially from a uh, standpoint of, hey, listen, this is what you need to expect. We're going to be there right for you. We're this older brother that you need to count on to kind of shepherd you through all this emotions that, you know, because the emotions need to be in check. Mm -hmm. um, you can't get too high and you can't get too low. Uh, it's got to be kind of being an even kill because it's a long two and a half, three hours. Mm -hmm. On the women's side, I assume that senior leadership is also something you rely on. They're going for win number 35 in a row. What can you say about that well, team? And I, I told John the same thing earlier, I know. Uh, and uh, as I said, John and I have been friends for so long, and I, I have so much respect for him and Bill, obviously. But it, it's, you know, when I talk to, I talked to the uh, women uh, earlier today, and I just said the same thing. I said, you know, make sure that you rely on each other because if you do this individually, it ain't never gonna work, you know? I mean, you have to swim as one. I know that sounds kind of corny, but if you do this together, you're gonna be successful. And that means going through these peaks and valleys that they're gonna have during that, during that long meet. Do you have a particular event circled on the women's side that, that you're excited for? You know, I, I love the sprints, man. <laughs> you know, I, I love those, those 50s and 100s, you know? And, and really in swimming at this level, on the collegiate level, the, the sprints are really what decides the meet in, in so many ways. Diving will be a big part of it, obviously, here for, for key elements. But in the end, it's all about relays, double points, and it's all about those sprints because so many things revolve around relays and sprints. So uh, that's, and I think that's where we... I shouldn't say we. That's where I think Navy is very strong. I have to be very neutral. You're among friends. Well, yeah, I am. Very, but it's funny because when I do the Olympics, I'm not allowed to say we when we say Americans. We, I have to say the U.S. So as a broadcaster, I try to stay as neutral. But I am. I'm, I'm with friends. And, uh, but we, yeah, we, Navy, they have to re really um, be patient in what they're doing and really uh, make sure that they do it together. Looking back to last year, Mackenzie Kim was just a freshman, 18 years old, won the diving event. What tips are coached for composure on the diving board, the well, in a meet like this? Well, I think somebody like Mackenzie is a good example of learning so much about the degrees of difficulty and how much that has increased. Because diving is a sport that I know nothing about. I mean, I, I've called 35 NC2As years in a row. We have swimming and diving. But I'm, some, I'm, idiot, I'm an idiot when it comes to diving. But I do know that degree of difficulty is, is critically important. And you can do these easy dives as much as you want and be perfect. But if you do a degree, higher degree of difficulty and still mess up a little bit, you're going to score more points. And I think McKinsey's learned a lot about that, as well as so many of the other Navy divers. They, their degrees of difficulty, I think, are going to be the turning point. You mentioned you spoke to the women earlier today, and I assume you're about to talk to the men. Mm -hmm. What is the motif of that message? As again, uh, I'll tell you that it, it's, 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 it's not easy to speak to these young uh, heroes. Uh, I, I, I just try to tell them that, um, you know, during this time, you're going to have some really good times and you're going to have some tough times. And the ones that are having the tough times, everybody needs to wrap their arm around them and say, it's going to be okay, let's get to the next one. Because you can have a crummy race, and then a half an hour later, you can have a great race, or vice versa. So you, you got to make sure that you don't get down, uh, you don't get down too low, and you, you don't get too high, because that can expend a lot of energy. And that's hard to do in a building like this. 
You know, the cheering is great and everything, but you, that the energy has to be controlled in many ways. So these guys know what they're doing. Bill's going to have them rocking and rolling. Looking forward to it. Any final thoughts before we sign off? You know, I, I, uh, it, it's funny because when I come here, Luke, it's literally like going back to the... Imagine what it would be like to live in the 50s in the United States. You know, the, the amount of respect and courtesy and um, the dedication and commitment and the responsibility that you feel when you walk onto this campus. And uh, uh, like I said, I told Justin and I told everybody that will listen to me, it means a lot more to me being here than them having me be here. Well, it means a lot that you are here. He's three-time Olympic gold medalist Rowdy Gaines. You can catch him on the ESPN Plus broadcast with Pete Medhurst starting at 5 o'clock. It's Army-Navy swimming and diving right here from Lejeune Hall. Yep. Killed it. Thanks, Rowdy.